Wisdom, the final frontier to true knowledge. Welcome to Wisdom Trek, where our mission is to create a legacy of wisdom, to seek out discernment and insights, to boldly grow where few have chosen to grow before. Hello, my friend. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, your captain on our journey to increase wisdom and create a living legacy. Thank you for joining us as we explore wisdom on our second millennium of podcast. This is day 1031 of our trek, and it is Wisdom Wednesday. Creating a biblical worldview is important in order to have a proper perspective of today's current events. To establish a biblical worldview, it is required that we also have a proper understanding of God's Word. Especially in our Western cultures, we do not fully understand the scriptures from the mindset and the cultures of the author. In order to help us all have a better understanding of some of the more obscure passages in God's Word, we are investing Wisdom Wednesdays reviewing a series of essays from one of today's most prominent Hebrew scholars, Dr. Michael S. Heiser. He has compiled these essays into a book titled, I Dare You Not to Bore Me with the Bible. Can a Christian be turned over to Satan for destruction? In today's essay, we will explore a passage that may indicate so. So today's title is, Signed, Sealed, and Delivered to Satan. Throughout the New Testament, family language is used to describe the relationship of believers to God and Jesus. The Lord's Prayer instructs us to address God as our Father in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 11 and 12 reveal that Jesus considered believers his own siblings. Paul says that Christians comprise the household of faith in Galatians 6, verse 10. How is it, then, that Paul tells the Christians living in Corinth that believers unrepentantly living in sin should not only be put out of the church in 1 Corinthians 5, verses 9-13, through but also handed over to Satan? And let me read 1 Corinthians 5, verse 5. Then you must throw this man out and hand him over to Satan so that his sinful nature will be destroyed and he himself will be saved on the day the Lord returns. If a person is handed over to Satan... Does that mean that he belongs to Satan? Does that person lose their salvation and have to be reconverted to Christ? Nowhere in this passage does Paul suggest that a believer in question becomes an unbeliever or is without hope of salvation. After demanding the unrepentant believer to be handed over to Satan, Paul notes that the goal of such decision is to, so that the sinful nature will be destroyed and he himself will be saved on the day the Lord returns. But what does Paul mean by that his sinful nature will be destroyed? Paul often uses the word flesh to refer to the physical body, but sometimes he uses it to refer to self-sufficiency, worldliness, or a manner of life. In this passage, it is translated sinful nature. Since someone being expelled from a church is not going to die as a result, the second possibility is the best. Paul is insisting that the unrepentant person be dismissed from the church to live in his or her sin and endure the consequences of their behavior. Paul's explanation of verse 6 helps to answer what he means by the sinful nature will be destroyed, but it does not explain what the phrase handed over to Satan means. For that, we must look at the Old Testament. The Israelites viewed that their land was holy ground and that the territory for the non-Israelite nations was controlled by demonic gods. Israel was holy ground because that is where the presence of God resided. The opposite was true everywhere else. This perspective shifted after the formation of the church. God's presence was no longer housed in the Jerusalem temple, but in the temple which was the body of believers. And this can be found in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Don't you realize that all of you together are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God lives in you? God will destroy anyone who destroys this temple. For God's temple is holy, and you are that temple. After the time of Jesus, where the church was, the Lord was present. Therefore, the church was considered holy ground. Anywhere outside the church was the demonic realm. Hence, Paul's thinking. To be expelled from the church, the local manifestation of the place where God lives, was to thrust that person into the realm of Satan. And that concludes our essay for this week. Next Wisdom Wednesday, we will continue in the New Testament as we look at Dr. Heisler's next essay titled, Treason and Translation. I believe that you'll find this another interesting topic to consider as we build our biblical worldview. Tomorrow, we will continue with our three-minute humor nugget that will provide you with a bit of cheer, which will help you to lighten up and live a rich and satisfying life. So encourage your friends and family to join us and then come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek creating a legacy. 
If you'd like to listen to any of the past 1,030 treks or read the Wisdom Journals, they are all available at wisdom-trek.com. And I encourage you to subscribe to Wisdom Trek on your favorite podcast player so that each day's trek will be downloaded to you automatically. And thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, but most importantly... I am your friend, as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal. And as we take this trek of life together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, then to others generously, lead with integrity, and then leave a living legacy each day. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, reminding you to... Keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.